Dave Bickerton, I'm the Editorial Director of Broadcast Sport. And we have a fireside chat next with City Football Group. Um, in the session, we'll find out how City Football Group designed and created its own TV studios. Um, and then we'll talk about some of the uh, kit lists that they've got in that facility. And then we'll talk more broadly about football clubs investing in this kind of industry leading facilities and managing their in-house uh, production of high-end content. Um, and we'll start off with intros, obviously. Um, Gavin, do you want to start us off, say who you are and what you do, please? Thank you, Jay. Yes, I'm, I'm Gavin Johnson. I am the media director for City Football Group, which means I look after all of content for Manchester City uh, and for all of the other clubs in our group, which we also own New York City, we also own Melbourne and, and many others. Uh, so all of that content output across everything from, from video to written word, design, photography, etc. And my team also look after all of the content that we uh, create for partners as well. So we create an awful lot for, for the partners in the club and then we distribute that across our channels. Okay, we'll find out more about all of that content shortly. Um, Kimberly. Hi, I'm Kimberly Walker Jones. I'm the studio manager for the New City Studios. We have several studios, but the main one is Studio One, based in the heart of the training ground. Fantastic. And Graham? Hi, everyone. Graham Belshaw. I'm live production lead for Manchester City. Uh, I'm uh, responsible for all the live content that we push out as a, as a club, so they're live games or live shows from the studio. Excellent. Right, we're going to find out a little bit more about what City Studios is first. Um, I know it's a brand that encompasses the physical studio, Studio One and Studio Two that you have, but there's also a lot more to City Studios and the output. So, um, Gavin, can you give us a bit of an overview? Yeah, so, so we launched City Studios earlier this year, and the simplest way to think about City Studios is kind of three pillars. The first is about creativity, and that's creative resource. So, for example, we hired, uh, 18 months ago, we hired an exec creative director, I think probably the first club in Europe to hire an exec creative director into the organisation. So we've hired creative resource, but it's also about a creative mentality flowing through City Studios, but the whole organisation. The second pillar is about production resource. So um, these two superstars here and, and their teams, uh, the quality of the people that bring all from very diverse backgrounds, some from, from broadcast, some from just from social, from digital, but we've hired very uh, extensively into proper production resource. And the third one, which Kimbers has just mentioned there, is, is proper studio facilities. So Studio One, which Kimberly will talk a little bit more about in a second, and also Studio Two over at the Etihad, is something we've invested very heavily into as well because we have a, an awful lot of output, which uh, I think probably the best way to show it is if we could just show the VT uh, of City Studios and gives you a little bit of a flavour as to what it's about. Yes, yeah, so, so we launched City Studio this year across those three pillars, but what it allows us to do is to create lots of very different content. So you saw a little clip of it there with uh, some of the documentaries we were making. We've got our own in-house, behind-the-scenes documentary of the men's first team, which we call Together. Uh, we just uh, finished season two of that, which was seven episodes from, from last season, obviously the title-winning season. We pr produce all of our short-form output, which is obviously very focused on, uh, on TikTok and Instagram Reels. We have a, a obviously fantastic photography team as well who uh, work very closely with the, with the team. What we've also got uh, is an embedded um, 
production team, if you like, with the first team as well. And the, the really key for that, and any of you work with, uh, you know, athletes of, of the status that, that ours are, you have to build their trust and mm. in order to gain you know, great output. And we've got some examples today of some of the footage that we've got over the last few weeks in the build up to the World Cup, which is a great example of, of getting close to players in terms of how it works. And, and but a lot of what we do for City Studios, um, as I said, we've got obviously multiple partners in the club and sponsors of the club. We are increasingly delivering the content which it brings our brand, Manchester City, together with their brand and producing really, really creative content, which we then distribute to audiences uh, uh, via our, our social channels and, and, and beyond. I guess one of the things about being close to the team is the physical proximity of the studio as well, isn't it? Which is quite literally right next to where the players are, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's just ideal and it's, the, it's just been nailed so point on, really, because a lot of team, a lot of uh, other teams have access to players, but they literally have to walk past our studio door <laughs> to get to their car. So you're like, mm. oh, hiya, do you want to <laughs> just nip in and do an interview? So the accessibility just makes it so much easier. And, you know, it's, it's not so time consuming. It just means that you can get access. You're in and out. You're ready. The studio is, I mean, you saw there, it was literally the door's there and then the training ground is there. Mm. So if then they have media responsibilities, because it's not just us or PLP or Sky, the studio is already then set up. And then the, the studio is so self-encompassing that we can move areas around like we did for you <laughs> so that I can set it up and we can go, OK, you've got that area for an official interview. You've got that area for some creative content. And then we can have the, the back end of the studio where we can set up photography or a green screen so that the, the location is key, really, because mm. it's just the accessibility. You can be in and out in 20 minutes and then it, it's a sliding door of, mm -hmm. of creativity, really. OK, we'll find out a little bit more about what's inside that studio shortly. Um, Graeme, do you want to talk a little bit about the type of content? Gavin's obviously given us a bit of an overview, mm -hmm. but you're kind of in charge of, the, of, I guess, the output, really, aren't you? Uh, well, I'm one of many people <laughs> who are across it, because there's probably there's, that's just a flavour. There's so much content that we produce. Um, probably the best case study that I can speak of uh, from this, the three pillars that Gavin mentioned, was when we went to the, uh, our US tour, so those familiar with football will know that we go on a tour, well, apart from the pandemic, uh, we go on a pre-season tour, which is a, it's a very stressful, normally a period where you try and execute so much content. And in the past, as a, as a team and as a club, we have achieved great content, but we've struggled and it's been a stressful process. With Six Studios, because we've brought so much resource to the team, we were able to... Uh, in a sm much smaller window than normally, so I think eight days in the States. We del I think we posted about 350 plus pieces of content over, a, although we were there for eight days, probably about a 12 day period. We got 180 million views from all this content. Mm. It's the football, Gavin talked about the trust that the football team have with us. We were able to push the boundaries a little bit. So we had a creator, uh, I don't know if you're aware of Troy Hawk, He's a, the Greeters Guild, he's been, if you're on TikTok, he's everywhere. He's the one who stands outside buildings, isn't he? And, yeah, yeah, he's always outside buildings, really pleasant guy, but he welcomed the squad onto the plane, have a great um, pre-season trip. That set the foundation for then, we've actually, uh, to do all this content, 24 hours later, we had the manager, Erling Haaland, Jack Grealish, on a wing of a shuttle at NASA. Which is bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> that was all for a, a Puma kit launch, mm. which then was released the following day. All this because we've got this resource committed to do all this work. We had a 30 minute daily show from the team hotel. We had live training. We did have two games to cover as well, which we did with pitch side, a live show that was both pitch side and in the studio in Manchester. Mm. So it, it was a, a wonderful case study of this city studios actually uh, the practical side of it. And you, it was, we were uh, talking earlier, that was a remote production as well for some of that, wasn't it, with the, with the studio? Yeah, okay. yeah, I was very familiar with some of the guys we were talking earlier. It was, you know, we had uh, you know, cellular from the pitch side, um, 4G. Uh, we loved hearing about 5G earlier. It was straight onto our IT guys saying <laughs> we need some of that. Mm. Um, but yeah, 4G from uh, the stadiums in Houston and Green Bay. 
and that links in perfectly with Kimberley kind of overseeing everything back in Manchester. And with that sort of content, how do, how do fans access it? Everywhere. I mean, it's on our app, web, um, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, everywhere, every platform. And right. We've obviously got a subscription model, City Plus. Yeah. As well, as well as uh, we have a partnership, which I'm sure Gavin could talk about with Recast. Yes. Which is a, a similar model. But, yes. Um, uh, the, with Recast, that's the one where you can pay sort of just small amounts per game. Is that right? Yeah. So I'd say 98% of our output is 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 free. But we, we have City Plus, which is our subscription model, which is two ninety nine a month, where we invest very heavily in, in documentaries. Um, we, in the past, we've done uh, Kevin De Bruyne, done Edison, we did Fernandinho in the last season. Uh, we've got our ex exclusive documentary with Imer at the Port, which goes live next week, hopefully. Uh, we've got one with Mares in the new year, but we also do the, the live games. We've got a game on Sunday, which, which, which Kimberly's producing, which is a, a, a women's game. Mm. Um, but the vast majority of our content is, uh, is free, but we do our City Plus, but we also have Recast, which essentially is a pay-per-view model. So, okay, you don't want to subscribe on a monthly basis, which a lot of people don't. You just want to watch Sunday's game, which is, which is Kimberly's producing. That's no problem at all. You can go and pay as a one-off fee just to watch that as a pay-for-you model. So it's, it's giving flex flexibility to fans mm. that they consume the content however they want to. And these documentaries, how long are they typically? I know that together is like a feature lens mm. one almost, isn't it? Um, so these, the sort of individual player docs, and what sort of lens are you looking at for those? Yeah, so it, it, it depends what the content is. Um, it, it's anything from 25 minutes up to uh, like together uh, champions again from last season. Each seven episode was about 45, 46 minutes, something like that. Mm. So again, it, it's, it's wonderful behind the scenes content from mm. the training ground. Um, exclusive footage you just wouldn't see anywhere else. You know, it was a period in that Villa game end of the season when, mm. when City turned it around and Gundogan scored and we, we, we had footage of Jack Grealish in the, tu in the tunnel hyperventilating, <laughs> just virtually in tears. He couldn't cope because we were so close and we were going to blow it and everything yeah um but he uh but yeah so he's just amazing and, and also you just you see in these guys as human beings mm. you know that mm. jack, jack is a really really great guy and you're giving them a chance to you know you, you see everything on the pitch but it's also stuff off the pitch which is what our fans love as well mm. and we talked about this in another event we had but um do you think that having the players having the kind of familiarity of where you're shooting them and who's who's actually filming this content and that the knowledge that who they are gives you sort of better insight from them and a more sort of relaxed approach than say if it was a you know production for done elsewhere yeah you can and you can see i i can see when certain players have been interviewed by people in our teams you see how comfortable they are mm. and they see how relaxed they are and it, it comes down to trust mm. you know and that you know like you saw like the jack Grish var mm. thing you know john who's one of our colleagues he, he was in there day after a game, just filming them doing a warm down. And then they all started playing head tennis on the thing. And then it was Bernardo against Jack Grealish and they all interacted. And it was just this wonderful bit of content, mm. which did tens of millions of views, but all because John just, they trusted John to be in there. That yeah. he wasn't, and we had to check with them afterwards. Can we put this out? And they're like, yeah, no problem at all. Mm. We did another one, which was actually a, a partnership for EA Sports for a FIFA 22 launch. And uh, Kevin De Bruyne and, and Phil Foden, they basically chatted to our producers and said, can we prank Carl Walker? Yeah. Uh, and basically, he's like, yeah, of course we can. So we rigged up the, the dressing room in the, changing, uh, in the training ground and we created this amazing bit of content where Carl Walker was going nuts because he thought that his pace had been taken down on the ratings for the FIFA. <laughs> so we, we, and in that case, perfect. We've got a partner in, in, in EA who we've got a wonderful relationship with, who are extremely happy. Uh, and we've got the players love it because they're pranking one of their teammates, and we're very happy because we, you know, and the fans love it because they're they're, they're seeing an insight on uh, insight into the club. Brilliant. Right. Let's talk about um, the studio, Studio One, mm -hmm. and uh, it's I don't know, I'm probably getting this wrong. It's six months ago that you opened it, a year ago. Eight eight months. Eight months. Oh, yeah. in the in the middle. Yeah, like... Meet in the middle. Good stuff. Um, right, Kimberly, tell us all about it. You know how you designed it. What's in there? You know what your background is. Okay, so my background is broadcast television. Um, as I was going to say, I used to be a director, but we all multi-skill at City, which is what we were talking about earlier about how to bring new people into the industry. We're all quite inclusive of of bringing different skills so that to encourage APs to, to start directing, because we do so much content. So say like on, on Sunday, mm. I am directing the, the Conti Cup, 
but we're going to have people shadowing so that then they learn. And we're doing a five camera, very similar to that UEFA Youth League for, for BT Sport, very similar vein, five cameras, replays, doing a little bit of gantry analysis and things. So yeah. we're doing exactly the same coverage as, as you would do for, for any other sort of mm broadcast standard football game, really. And have you always done that? You know, some of the games actually created the content yourself from there, capture the live event? Yeah, yeah, and what we tend to do as well is that we want to like put, say, assistant producers on a camera, so we're always thinking about how do we capture the content? So obviously, we're delivering coverage of a football game, but, you know, if you're directing and you, you've got the multi-cameras, you're not particularly looking maybe at camera five because you're interested in camera one and two at the time, but camera five might be catching some really perfect little bit of skill off screen that, that we didn't yeah. cut, the director didn't cut up. And because we've got APs covering and they've got an editorial mind, they're thinking that's a great 10 second clip. And then at the end, they're, they're sharing that and then it-, it Put it on TikTok. Put whatever. it on TikTok, yeah, yeah. put it on all the social ch channels. And it's sort of just giving a more, inclusive feel and a way of, of giving a, a whole different viewpoint to our, our channel and, and our audience as mm. well. But yeah, the, um, the City Studio, so it's eight months and it, it's amazing. It's really well designed because we've got, we've got a large video wall that can be isolated into thirds or into sixth or, or whatever configuration your mind would want to wish for, um, or a large graphic that we could just, every day is different in Studio One. So I could, I could come in and I could get an email saying, Etihad are coming in, can you design the studio like an aeroplane? And you're like, hmm, <laughs> okay. Or the other day, um, we were creating the studio as the Emirates Palace so that Jack Grealish and Phil Foden could give each other um, a golden facial massage as if they were in the, in the palace for one of our partners and things. Yeah. So you've got to think creatively and every day is, is different, but the whole team gets behind it. And then it creates so much fun content and the players just love it because they're there, they feel comfortable because they know us, they know that we're not gonna stitch them up. We're gonna make it, it look fun and also it's not gonna take very long, mm. which is key because you know, they're, they're athletes, they're professional athletes, they've got, their job is on, on the pitch. Mm. So they don't really then want to be having to go to Media City for a big mm. shoot that could then take an hour there, mm. then into hair and makeup, then, you know, mm. and then that, that's, that's like a six hour shoot for something we can do in 20 minutes. Mm. And um, is that what used to happen to some degree? Yeah, so yeah. If, if you have bigger, a bigger shoot with a bigger, uh, we would have to outsource it, where now we can just, you know, it, it just makes sense. It makes mm. sense financially. It makes sense for the players. It makes sense for, for, for the content makers, really. Mm. Um, I think an ideal um, example was when we signed Haaland. Mm. So we designed the studio. We had him in the Studio One, for example, for 45 minutes. And it's how do you create the most content, making the player feel and his entourage make them feel wanted and immersed in the experience as well, because they've got to feel that, you know, they're part of the family and they're not just sat in the green room. So um, we, had the, we had the different areas. When he came in, it was big welcome signs, welcome to his family. It's like, wow, this is cool. And then as he turned around, the, whole, the lighting can all be um, bespokely set. So it's just a press of a button. The lights change, it went dark. We pulled the, the blackout curtains round to create the, the creative content video. Um, and then we may, and then he turned around then, and then in the back end of the studio, we'd set a sofa up and we'd recreated um, from when he was a child, because he's always been a, a big city fan. Um, should we roll the VT for us, please? So that was how we announced Harland. And um, from all the different pieces of content, just on our channels alone, we had 125 million views um, from, I think it was June the 1st to June the 19th, just on our channels alone. I think globally, I think it was 227 million or something like that yeah. from 3,000 then different pieces of content that we, that we created. Um, but the, the player had such fun doing it. Mm. And he, he really appreciated 
that us as a team, we'd gone into the research and, and we know we went out looking specifically for going to Ikea or, or wherever to get these specific brand of sofa and, <laughs> and so that we could recreate it and make it an exciting content, really. Yeah, and so for, for 15 minutes worth of activity, uh, multiple different bits of content were created. Yeah, it's like 200, 230 million you know, views, but not one single goal in that footage. No. Right? no. Yeah. There's been goals, there's been a few goals ever since today, <laughs> yeah. in case you haven't noticed, but <laughs> it, it just all purely made yeah. the creative. And Harlan's a wonderful player and he's a wonderful guy, mm. but it shows what you can do with the right setup, with the right talent, with the right mm. facilities. Amazing. Um, Graham, you can tell us a little about Match Day Live as well. Uh, it's one of your current yeah. magazine shows, isn't it? Yeah, so for every, every men's game uh, and, uh, and some of the bigger W uh, Women's Super League games, we create um, a, a live show primarily targeting the City fans. So it's all from a City lens. So we've got, um, it's about an hour pre-match, so we launch the team news. And it's all, it's a bit like a podcast in vision. Mm. So it's... Um, We've got presenters who are you know, quite well known, but City fans. We've got pundits who range from former players who you know, have City at the heart of the club, uh, City at the heart, depending on other, their other teams. And then we also invite other creators from, you know, from YouTube, TikTok, also City fans as part of the, the group. And we just talk Man City for the whole hour uh, and lead up to the, uh, the kickoff, yeah. interact with fans. We have fans coming in, call, uh, calling for the show competitions uh, and then we'll update at half time and join again at full time we have our own commentary so it's a real city focus wraparound of all of our men's games and um, it's a bit like a quite a pride project because we all started it in the pandemic mm. I'm sure like everybody else you know we were all working from home I quite enjoyed that time <laughs> when you know it's so uh, we'd all set up with vision mixers at home graphic operators at home all the talent were at home um, and over the last 18 months, 24 months, it's slowly migrated back to this new normal, uh, yeah. of which now it's in the studio that Kimberly manages. And I think there's a, there's a VT that just shows a flavour of, of the show. Excellent. If we can roll that match day live, VT. We're going to go down pitch side because our Georgia has managed to grab Calvin Phillips for a quick chat. So, Calvin, we have been in Catalonia for about three days now. How important is it for you as a new player to spend this time with your teammates? Oh, there's the man himself. Smartest I've seen him. He's normally in like a t shirt. He's normally smart cash, isn't he? He's got home, though, hasn't he? <laughs> He's going home. He is a friendly, but Pep won't be treating him as a friendly. He doesn't treat any games as a friendly. I think that it's very serious because there are two big teams. Two big top teams. I think Alvarez is going to score. City's going to win 5 0. <laughs> what year did Pep Guardiola become manager of Man City? 2016. 2015, I think. 2015. I've got a clip. Season ticket holder. 20 odd years, I've got a clip. Um, you're seeing there now that is Juan Carlos Unthue, who um, the former Barcelona player and coach is a friend of Pep Guardiola and he was diagnosed as having ALS. Now that is an incurable neurodegenerative disease that sees patients suffer a progressive loss of function with their life prognosis shortened to an average of just four to six years from diagnosis. So that's a good example of what we talked earlier where we, this was actually a friendly that we had the, the rights to. So it was live on City Plus and recast. So for our subscription and pay as you go models. And then we put out the Match Day Live show wrapped around free on all of the channels. So with a bit of remote production in the new camp or Camp New, wherever you prefer. And then the studio show with, and it's very, very informal. So as you can see Sean and Jolie in there, that's a good flavour of the type of, you know, it's very relaxed. Yeah. And uh, despite their other clubs, they are big City fans. <laughs> and do you do the match day live for every game? Or is it... Every men's like, game. Every men's so game. So including friendlies. So yeah. I think we did around... So we... And City gets quite far in every competition. So we had about 60 plus games last season. Uh, expect to do the same this year, along with some women's games. So uh, please tune in on December 11th when we've got the women's derby mm. at the Etihad against Man uh, United. Mm. Um, and then, but as a team, we're always trying to strive to almost catch up with these guys as well, <coughs> you know, with all the stuff that we want to do within the show, the type of talent we have uh, available. So we're, we're just yeah. always striving to improve. 
And talking of talent, is it easy enough to find people to join your team in Manchester? Is there the kind of talent behind the camera research there as well? Yes, I mean, it's, we're fortunate, I think, especially now with the, I guess, back with Media City move and mm. you know, there's a, uh, the Salford University has got a course on the TV uh, production. Yeah. So we're finding lots and lots of uh, graduates uh, are applying. Right. Plus just, I think people, uh, you know, without back slapping ourselves too much, you know, people do see our output and, and want to be part of that. Yeah. Whether it's long form documentaries, live social stuff, they do get in touch and want to be part of it. I think it's, a, I was going to say, I think it's a good opportunity as well because they, they get to learn a lot of, I know, multi-skilling, but it really is. One day you could be shadowing, directing, or you could be producing, or, mm. or you could be on camera, or you could be on graphics. So mm. you really are doing a multitude of, of things. So mm. every day, every day really is different for all of us who, who work in the, in the production team. Mm. So it kind of like keeps it fresh and, and it keeps it exciting. And I think especially graduates quite interested in that, especially because of how the media industry has progressed over the years that you are not just in a niche or you're simply a director or you're simply a producer mm. i think now you you do have to be able to to multi-skill and i think it's a it's it's definitely a good training ground for for anybody interested in working in sport media mm. yeah yeah and, and a great example so uh, pep guardiola signed a new contract which we announced yesterday we captured that footage on uh, on monday the two producers on it they started in, this, in our business two years ago right. as like assistant producers Junior. and they've both just been, recently been promoted. They did an absolutely wonderful job. Pep knows them, Pep trusts them. The output is amazing and it's all, all across the globe yesterday for, for two guys who, you yeah. know, Hattie and, and Craig, who literally joined us two years ago. And what sort of team size do you have now? Um, I think the whole team is probably about 55, 60, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, we, we, we haven't picked, you know, certain talents at senior end, but mostly we, we, we hire from, from quite junior levels, mm. give people experience. Mm. You know, Kimberley's ethos there is, is sort of bleeds through the whole organisation into mm. empowering people, you know, focus on certain areas, but also not being afraid to, to test new things as well. And then we heard from Jamie this morning, I don't know if he's in here at the moment, but um, he visited you by sounds of yesterday very complimentary about your facilities and your mm. setup there. Um, but he also talked about sort of collaborations with broadcasters as well. I mean, now you've talked about sort of brand partnerships and obviously your content for City Plus and your social platforms and, and recasts. And, 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 and so what kind of things might he be alluding to there? I mean, do you work with Sky and BT? At yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Jamie, I, I wasn't at the meeting yesterday, but Jamie came up yesterday and, and, and we gave him a tour of the studio um, and he had a couple of meetings um, internally. We have a really good relationship with BT Sport. We've got a great relationship with Sky. We work really collaboratively with them. Uh, and part of that is brainstorming on different content ideas. Right. Uh, they have certain rights which we, which we help facilitate, but we also take it beyond that, where we share behind the scenes content. For example, Pep's interview is a great example yesterday where we gave them the full 11 minutes for them to slice and dice and use whatever they want to do gotcha. on Sky Sports News. But no, we, 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 we try to have a really open and, and collaborative relationship with them to, to help them. It helps us to, to, to help them, if you like. Mm. But, um, but that also goes across the globe. So we had one of the South American broadcasters came in just to, to you know, and Kimberly, again, set the studio up for them to, to shoot with, uh, with Erling, with, with Rodri, and with another player the other week. And the feedback from the, uh, the presenter was like, she, she's literally doing a tour of Europe for, for the South American broadcast. She's like, this is the best place in Europe. You've got the best facilities at Europe, literally, and early Holland's walking straight off the training ground, having a shower and coming straight into the studio. Mm. She was blown away by it. Amazing. Te Demo. Technically as well, um, because the studio is purpose built for studio purposes. So we've had it all completely acoustically soundproofed. Mm. Um, we've got specialized lighting. We've got um, the screens that if they want particular asset to come in at a certain time or particular branding so that it makes it makes the people's lives a lot easier who are coming in so sky and bt are like yes great we're going <laughs> we're going to because it, it's not you're not just put into a little cupboard room yeah. that you could be at say say another club because that's where you've got to be shoehorned into it's purpose-built yeah. for that so it just brings the level of production 
up, which is what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve the very best in class level of production and um, with the facilitation of a, of a purpose-built studio, that, that's what you're going to accomplish. Mm. And is the studio used every day? Every single day. Every single day. Every single day. <laughs> right. I get countless emails. It's like sometimes I'm like, oh, can I just have like a little bit of a break to do some admin? But every day it could be. But, but the, it's lovely, though, because we get loads of different requests. So say, like last week, um, the education um, department contacted mm -hmm. me and they were doing a Christmas truce um, project for the under 12s so we decided to take it a little bit further and we had a PA day for the men's the next day so we got the Christmas Choose poem and some of the first team players also said parts of the Flanders poem so then we intercut it and we, we then this, the under 12s were in the studio um, and we put poppies and imagery everywhere and we were helping them with the auto cue so that it, it looked as if they'd memorised the poem um, and then we interlaced it with the first team and then sent that out as a project for the PLP Christmas Truce. So it's just every single day is different, mm. but it's not just for first team men or first team women. Mm. It's for the academy. It's for the, un, you know, it's for the under 23s. It's for the under 12s. It's for our city and the community. Um, mm. It's for everybody. Partnerships, partnerships mm. continually want to, to use it and facilitate it. It's just, yeah. it, it makes sense because of the location and what it is, it just, mm. it just works. We've got quite a few questions here, so I'll just pick one or two of them. Um, and an interesting question. Uh, does being so embedded with the team mean that you hold, you have to hold back with critical questions after say a, a result that didn't quite go your way? Um, I mean, when we interview after the game, what you probably find is the broadcasters are going to ask most of those challenging questions. Yeah, and, and we probably have this already, have to have a different line. So we're looking for different things mm. than what maybe someone will push. So, yeah, I mean, we, we are, we're for the fans. We're, 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 you know, Graham talked about Match Day Live. It's unashamedly city biased, <laughs> as it absolutely should be. Yeah. It is the city's angle, you know, we, we love our players. We're very blessed with obviously the quality of the players. And, and Pep and everything, and, and across the women's team, they're all exceptional footballers, but we are unashamedly city biased. The show also goes into the um, home dressing room. Yes, <laughs> right. Right. Very good. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. I mean, we don't we don't hide away from any clangers. Yeah, but we certainly don't um, call anyone. You know, we don't do a Sunes or Roy no. Keane. No. It's probably not your place to do that, really, right. is it? Um, right. Like I so say, we have got tons of these, so I'll try and rattle through them. Um, so this is another interesting question. How did you go about convincing stakeholders of the value of the investment in the studio from a kind of return on investment perspective? Because I guess, you know, there's, you're almost unique, I'd say, in uh, being a football club with such a high-end studio. Yeah, um, it was a lot of justification. A lot of it was about, um, OK, everything we try to do at City, you try to do it the best you possibly can. And we felt we weren't presenting our players to the world as in, a, in as good a place as, as we could. Um, mm. I made some big bets in terms of what I thought our, our KPIs could achieve in terms of the audience numbers. And it was quite interesting. We, you know, it's only a snapshot, but it is a representation in terms of where we're going. So in October, on a lot of analysis, you can't compare yourself to all clubs because you know, a lot of it's hidden, but on certain platforms you can. So YouTube is a great example. Mm. So we, in, um, in October, we had I think, 62 million views of our YouTube output, and which was the most of all of the big clubs, not in England, in Europe. Mm. So you think mm. of all those huge clubs across Europe, we had the most views of our, of our content, organic, okay? And you also think about our Man City in terms of the fan base and is it as big as other clubs? It is accelerating quickly. And another example of that also on YouTube um, our active users on our YouTube channel, watching all of our content, um, we had over 30 million. The next best was 21 million. <laughs> that is the size of mm. Manchester City now, but it's also an indictment of the work that we're doing, mm. powered by City Studios, which is about the creative, the production and the facilities. Mm. Great stuff. Um, I don't know what time we're ending, but let's do a few more of these. Um,
So I suppose this is an interesting question with the sort of branded content and the content you're creating. Mm. Um, how do you make sure content doesn't become too close to marketing and stays interesting to fans? I suppose that authenticity, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a great one. In, in my previous role at Joe Media, we built the whole business on that, on branded content of creating, um, a, of creating content, which people desperately wanted to watch, but also brands wanted it wanted to be close to. Yeah. Uh, and we created back in the day, a, program called, a show called House of Rugby, we created uh, Unfiltered and, and many others. And having a specialized um, creative branded content team working very closely with all of the resources we have means that our branded content as, you know, as a bit of a glib title, I think is as good as it, as it gets. Mm. So it is about, uh, producing amazing content, which fans want to watch, but making sure that the brand message is in there, whether it's Gatorade, whether it's Unilever, we have a, a partnership with them, whether it's um, My Dear, whether it's Etihad Airways, whatever it might be. It, ultimately, it's about having great ideas, but also building the trust of, uh, of marketing directors or sponsorship directors at, 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 our, par at our, our partners. And we're starting to get a lot of a lot of traction with that now, and there's a lot of trust that what the output is is quality. Mm. And because the numbers are so big, as mm. I referenced before, people now trust that we're going to produce amazing content for them. Yeah. So you don't get it right every single time, but we're, we're getting pretty good. I suppose as well, because we have the studio in the heart of, of where the players are, when the players are coming in to do their, their content, so literally we had one at the beginning of the week with the, the women's team um, for a headphone shoot, and we were we were like making them just do silent discos and making them feel, you know, do funny things really. But they had a great laugh and they all felt comfortable because they were just surrounded by everybody they knew and they knew that anything, and we asked them at the end, was there anything, any movement that you didn't particularly like and things. So they know we've got their back. Yeah. And also because of the location they're in and out and then it, it, it's done. So it's about having fun as yeah. well, I think. Yeah. And I've been told, uh, I think we've got time for one more, have we? Maybe. Yeah, um, right, let's do one more. And it's. Uh, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, this is a slightly more technical one, but an interesting one in terms of the, the quality of content. What are your ambitions with live mixed reality and AR for your studios at City? So, do you have that kind of ambition to do, you know, your like, presentation you might get here? We, we, we looked at. Go on, considered you... it, yeah. And it scared us, to be fair, at the time. <laughs> um, pu purely because of the time scales, we wanted to get something created and we wanted to build something that we knew we could use daily for several formats a day. And that sometimes the manager might just call up and say, I need to do this for uh, a colleague in Barcelona. Can I do this now? If it's VR, I think the skill sets that we have aren't quite up to doing that. Yeah, but we'll certainly look at look towards that. We don't rule out anything. Yeah, we 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 love we like, all the sessions today. We've we've kind of thought, oh, that's we'll steal yeah. that, or we'll <laughs> or we'll uh, we'll give them a shout and contact them. But there is there is a desire, but only if we can do it well and to the speed and efficiency we can mm. we can currently work at. Fantastic. Right, we'll have to stop there. But can we thank our panel for a brilliant discussion? Mm -hmm.